Does the word repent actually mean stop sinning? Or are we misinterpreting this word? What does the word repent actually mean? And um, how can we well use it? You see, the Bible has mentioned about 32 times uh, in places where we see God repenting. Is God a sinner? For example, the Bible in the book of uh, uh, Genesis chapter 6, it says, And God repented himself that he was he had created man. And we see again, uh, when God was dealing with Nineveh, the Bible says that God repented of what he was about to do to Nineveh. So was God a sinner? So when we come to the word repent or repentance, Many people tend to confuse that word and think that it means stop sinning. And if it means stop sinning, then God was a sinner. And uh, my friends, what I like to tell you, repentance, the word repent comes from the root word metanoia. And metanoia means a change of mind, a change of mind. Or uh, wanting to do something and then you decide, no, I'm not going to do this, I'm going to do something else. Like the way we see God wanted to destroy Nineveh. But when they prayed and cried uh, before the Lord, God repented of his actions. Basically meaning he stopped what he wanted to do to destroy them. You see the point? So now when the Bible tells us repent, what does the Bible actually tell us to do? It, it tells us to stop putting our trust in the things that we used to trust before. And we change our minds and trust in the living God. So when God tells you repent, repent and turn from your sins, it doesn't really mean stop sinning. It means change your mindset. Then God is going to hear it and is going to help you through your course of salvation. You see, there are people who are drunkards, for example. They say, uh, I'm going to stop drinking, being a drunkard or being a smoker or being an immoral person. And then I'm going to come to God. I want to stop something and then I come to God. My friend, it is very difficult for you to stop what you do by your own means, by your own power. It is only God who can give us the power to stop doing this or that. So the only thing that we need to do is to repent, to change our minds, to put our trust now in God, despite us having these weaknesses, despite me being a smoker, I will come with my smoking. I tell God, now from today, I've decided to follow you. I put my faith in you so that now you can change my behavior. You can change my sin. You can clean me up. And that repentance is what is called the change of mind. That is what we call metanoia. That is, you, you stop trusting in this and you trust in God. And that is what we call repentance. And repentance makes us holy. How does repentance make us holy? What, is, what does the word holy mean? The word holy means to be set apart. All right? So when you change your mind from trusting the things of the world, you're set apart unto God. You see? So these are not super spiritual words that uh, people keep on thinking, wow, this is too deep. This too, no, there's nothing which is deep. When you repent, when you stop putting your trust in the things of the world, in your money, in your effort, in your things, in the things that you really trusted, which you put before God, and you put your trust in God himself, then you have repented. And if you have repented, then you have become holy. Holy is not uh, holding your hands and crying and feeling merciful. No, that is not holiness. Holiness means to be set apart, to be different, set apart for God right so the moment you 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 repent then you are set apart and then from that being set apart you're declared righteous god declares you righteous because now you put your trust in him you see the point and then now the bible says now the only other thing that you need is to confess him confess jesus christ as your lord and savior and voila that is a simple gospel the simple understanding of salvation. So, once you've already repented, something else that you need to understand. Now, God is going to do something called cleaning up. 
cleaning up. This is what we call the regeneration, the sanctification of the Holy Spirit. So he cleans you up. Now you put your trust in him. It's like you say, Dad, I'm here. I know I'm dirty. I know I've been a prodigal son, but I'm here. Then your daddy cleanses you. He gives you a white robe. He washes you. He gives you food to come back to the person who you're supposed to be. And then he feeds you and he keeps you well, keeps you warm until you become a full, full person in Christ Jesus. You get the point? So it's as easy as that. That is what repentance is all about.